All right, we're we're on. <clears throat> Good. So what's been happening is Nate has had to go into my computer after the meeting for like the next day to download it because it's recording on my computer. Oh. So he has to download it and then upload it to YouTube. But now that I'm logged in, he doesn't have to do that. At least that's the goal. Hmm. All right, here's Art. Oh, there you are. Hi, Ron. Hey, Ron. <clears throat> How's it going? Good. This is a big, big night for me. We're actually at my house. Oh, oh. hi, Ron. <laughs> I mean, John, Art, John, sorry. <laughs> is John at your house? <laughs> no, we decided, you know, they got rid of me. They, they, they <laughs> I ate too much. Hey, Paul. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Okay, good. Hello, everyone. Hello, Paul. Oh. <clears throat> Whose dog That's is that? Not my dog. <laughs> Whose dog is not mine? That's my Whose dog. dog. Is it your dog? Yeah, B BJ, that picture behind you is crooked. You need to straighten it. Oh, I thought I did. No, BJ, it's fine. Oh, thank you. Art, you are awful. He's a big tease at times. <laughs> Ron, the flag behind you is, is half folded the wrong way. You need to fix that, yeah, right? We'll go by the clock on my computer. I have 557 plus. That's it? Thanks, Ron. Okay. We'll see if we can get everybody on. Hello, here. John. Good, good evening. Hey, John. Hi, John. Hi. Hello. Hi, Hi Mark. John. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Hi, everybody. John. Good job, Art. I'm Hi, Martha. <laughs> Art, did you get on this all by yourself? Uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, my uh, my staff assistant helped me. <laughs> my production manager. Ah, uh, nice. Ron, is it? Are all the uh, board members on? No. No, if we're waiting for Joe and Mike. Joe and Mike, let me just double check the list here and make sure I'm not missing them. Hey, Bill. Yeah. Yes. We, uh, John Shulman and I share the same mailman, your brother. Yes, 
but I get my mail before John does, so I get to check his out. I'm always looking for those welfare checks, you know. That's against federal postal regulations. <laughs> That's not allowed. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Believe me, I've gotten that spiel a few times. That's against postal regulations. Can't go there. <clears throat> Okay, I have 6 p.m. This meeting will come to order. This is a regular meeting of the planning board. Um, we will start um, by taking a roll call of the board members so everyone knows who is present. Mr. Pirick. Mr. Chumo. Here. Mrs. Owen. Here. Mr. Weber. Present. Mr. Fenton. Mr. Nash. Here. And I am here. Um, as we have done on all of our Zoom meetings, um, for the members of the board, please raise your hand in the field of view if you wish to speak and wait till you are recognized. Um, identify yourself when you are making a motion or seconding a motion. And all votes will be taken by a, a roll call voice vote. First item on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes. Uh, the first ones are the minutes of our regular meeting on October 14th. May I have a motion to approve these minutes? No motion, BJ. Oh, Art. Uh, a motion is made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the mon uh, on the minutes of October fourteenth? Hearing none, Mr. Pirick, Mr. Chumo. Here. Do you approve the minutes? I. Yes, I do. I. Mrs. Owen. Yes. Mr. Weber. I. Mr. Fenton. Yes. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. So they pass, they are approved 6-0. Next are the minutes of the special site visit meeting on October 5th. May I have a motion to approve these minutes? So moved. Oh, Bill Nash. AJ. Second, Art Weber. Motion is made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the minutes of October 5th? Mr. Pirick. Joe, I see your uh, face in a picture. Do you have your audio activated? Can you see Ron? I, I unmuted him. Joe, you there, Joe? Yes, can you hear me? There you yes. go. Yes, okay. Mr. Pirick. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Yes. Mr. Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Hey, Nash. Yes. Aye. And I vote aye. The minutes of October 5th are approved. The next are the minutes of our um, uh, special meeting on November 4th. We have a motion to approve the minutes of the November 4th meeting. Bill Nash moved. Second. 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 Eh. <laughs> motion is made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Pirick. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. The, mo uh, the minutes are approved. The next item on the agenda is correspondence. The first is an email correspondence from Nancy Manning dated October 25th, 2020 concerning KJ's hotel application. May I have a motion to receive this correspondence? Don't motion made. Second. second. Motion is made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mm -mm. Mr. Pirick. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. <clears throat> aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. That correspondence is 
received. The next is a correspondence from David Fox, dated November 17th, 2020, concerning the um, uh, hearing on the request of James Sullivan property. I have a motion to receive this correspondence. So moved, Bill Nash. Second. Motion is made and seconded to receive this correspondence. Is there any discussion? I don't have it. Came in email, I believe. It came, it came to you via email from Ron. All right, well, I must have missed it. Here it is. <laughs> Get your assistant out, Art, to dig in the- You, you can abstain if you want to, Art. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pyrrhic. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Abstain. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. Uh, the motion, uh, the uh, correspondence is received with one abstention. Next item are continuances. Um, as of now, we have three continuances and possibly a fourth. The first item to be continued is item 4A, a public hearing application of Jack Gullison for development plan review, including requests for waivers from certain design standards of the Middletown rules and regulations regarding the subdivision and development of land section 521 for construction of a new commercial building to include an 18 room hotel with a restaurant and associated site work located on property identified as 59 Aquidneck Avenue, Assessors Plat 115 SE, Lot 169. May I have a motion to, uh, well, is there anyone here to speak on this? Not that I'm aware of. I've been in contact, or Rita and I both have been in contact with the attorney representing the applicant, and uh, they have submitted revised plans to the zoning office. We're waiting for sets of revised plans uh, for the development plan review, the TRC to conduct its review, um, which obviously hasn't happened yet. So uh, I think the appropriate action would be to continue this to the December 9th meeting. Move to continue, Bill Nash. That's a motion to continue to the 12 9 meeting, Bill, right? Correct. Is there a second? Second, second John Schumel. Motion is made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Uh, Pierrick. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. The item is continued to the December 9th meeting. The next item is 4B. This is a public hearing request of James Paradise, owner of property at 170 Aquidneck Avenue, Plat 115 SE, lots 145, 146, 147, for a waiver of development plan review pursuant to section 908 of the Middletown Rules and Regulations regarding the subdivision and development of land. May I have a motion to continue this to the December 9th meeting? So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Pyrrhic. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. That item is continued to the December 9th meeting. The next item is uh, to be continued is item 4C. This is a public hearing application of GD Middletown West Main I LLC for development plan review, including requests for waiver from certain design standards of the Middletown rules and regulations regarding the subdivision and development of land section 521 and recommendation to the zoning board of review regarding special use permit application for development in zone one of the watershed protection district to allow construction of a ground mounted solar photovoltaic installation on a property located at 1747 
West Main Road, Plant 111, Lot 9A. May I have a motion to continue this to the December 9th meeting? So moved, Bill Nash. Second, BJ. Motion is made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. I, Kier, uh, yes. yes. I'm just curious what uh, the, the setback is on this one. I thought we were in pretty good shape with this. Was the TRC not complete? TRC is not complete. We were um, waiting for the applicant to address some documentation. There were easements, uh, cross easements with the abutting property. And I believe that's close to, if not resolved, um, we will need to complete the TRC process though before the planning board takes it up. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion to continue this item? Mr. Pirick. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. The item 4C is continued. Next item on the agenda is item 4A. And I believe Mr. Silva is here to speak on that. Four D, Paul. Four I'm sorry, four D, thank you. Yeah. Four D. This is a uh, public hearing application of Newport County YMCA for development plan review, including requests for waivers from certain design standards of the Middletown rules and regulations regarding the subdivision and development of land, section 521, to allow renovation and expansion of an existing building located on property at 792 Valley Road, Platte 115, Lot 1. Is Bob Silver here, Ron? Yes. I am, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you, but I can't see you. It's okay. That's, that's a plus. <laughs> that's scary, man. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, for the record, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Robert M. Sobel from the firm of uh, Silver Thomas Marlin and Offenberg LTD, representing uh, Newport County YMCA. And, uh, I would simply request, I know it's a late hour, but I would simply request that this matter not be heard tonight and, and rescheduled to a, a later planning board meeting. And for circumstances that require me to suggest, I would ask that it be continued to be January meeting of the uh, board, and I believe that's on the 13th. Bob, your, your audio is really bad. We can hardly hear you. Yeah, you're, you're fading in and out. Uh, I, I heard that you uh, requested continuance January. to the January meeting. Is that correct? Is that's that correct. Yeah, 15th. It's the 13th, January 13th. 13th. January 13th. <laughs> is there anything else, Mr. Silva? No, nothing at this point, and I thank you for the consideration. Okay, oh, may, I have, may I have a motion to continue this item to the January 13th meeting? So, so moved. moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded to <clears throat> continue item 4D <clears throat> to the January 13th meeting. Is there any discussion? Mr. Pirick? Aye. Mr. Chumo? Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. Item 4D is continued to the January 13th meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Silva. Um, for the purpose of accommodating um, guests to this meeting, items 4E and 4F will be moved to the end of new business. I repeat, items 4E and 4F will be moved to the end of new business. The next item is item 5A. This is a public hearing request of GRJ Middletown LLC for waivers from certain commercial development design standards of section 521 of the Middletown rules and regulations regarding the subdivision and development of land for proposed renovations of an existing commercial building located at 425 East Main Road, Platte 113, Lot 
26. Who is here to speak for item 5A? Uh, first of all, may I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved, Bill Nash. Second. And John Schumer. No. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? <clears throat> Mr. Pirick. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. The public hearing is open. Uh, yes, uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, uh, David Martland, on behalf of the applicant, uh, GRJ Middletown LLC. Uh, this uh, property is located at 425 East Main Road, uh, Plat 113, Lot 26. It is the, um, it's currently the Ramada Inn, uh, formerly the, the Royal Plaza Inn. Uh, my clients purchased this property approximately a year ago. And their plan is to undertake some uh, extensive uh, renovations uh, of the facade as well as the interior. Uh, we have uh, gone to the to the zoning board uh, for um, the the zoning approvals necessary for uh, some changes to the to the roof line to add the, the cupolas, uh, and we're here uh, before the board tonight. Uh, seeking a waiver to basically use ASIC uh, trim board um, uh, uh, in connection with the exterior materials, uh, as well as um, uh, drive it uh, 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 brick um, along the, uh, the bottom course of the building. Um, as, in Ron's memo, we also noted that we might be seeking waivers uh, for uh, the uh, lighting. Uh, I would like to suggest to the board this evening, we're not requesting uh, any waivers with respect to lighting and we'll make certain that um, uh, any of the, the lighting used uh, on the exterior will be uh, appropriately shielded um, in accordance with the commercial design standards. Uh, so we're, we're before the board uh, this evening, simply seeking the uh, the waivers for the materials. Um, I'm not if, sure if uh, Ron wanted to uh, put the uh, uh, exterior elevations up, so the board has an opportunity and members of the public have an opportunity to see what uh, is being proposed. Um, the as as you're aware, the the, the existing building is really just sort of a, you know, not, not the most attractive building. And uh, what my clients uh, wanna do is uh, put sort of a, a red brick uh, along the bottom course of the building, put uh, cedar shingles um, on the, the upper uh, uh, stories, the second and uh, third story and uh, replace, uh, put a new roof um, uh, on which will, change from the uh, the red shingles that are currently up there to a um, um, uh, uh, sort of a uh, more of a black uh, type of shingle more in keeping with uh, uh, the appropriate architecture for um, for this area um, additionally they're making some changes to the windows so they look a bit more traditional six over one as opposed to the uh, the, the, uh, the plain windows that are in there now is, and finally they're making uh, some some changes to the, the roof over the um, the I guess I'll just call it the tower portion uh, the four story portion as well as adding some cupolas uh, uh, to to the roof um, there is presently on the existing building one large cupola and this sort of breaks it up into a, a a portion of a number of uh, different cupolas, uh, which helps, I think, to break up uh, some of the massing of this uh, structure. Um, so the, the, the trim board that we're proposing um, on the structure, we're proposing to use a composite material, the, the ASIC trim board. And so we're requesting that waiver from the board this evening. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I would like to remind the members of the board that uh, according to the memo on this item, uh, 
we uh, this did not trigger the full development plan review, so we are only considering the waiver. Is there any discussion from members of the planning board? I got one question for Mr. Martin. Mr. Weber, go ahead. I, I noticed the, uh, it will not be the Ramada, it will be the Pell Hotel. Is that the new name? Uh, yes, that's what's being proposed as the new name for the hotel. Pell, huh? He's got a bridge, now he's got a hotel. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments from members of the planning board? Paul, uh, Paul Mike. Mr. Pirick, Mr. Pirick. Uh, um, my question to uh, Mr. Marlin, Dave, this is for the entire, the building's going to be redone in this <laughs> manner, not just certain sections. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. The entire uh, uh, building is being redone. Right? Thank um, you. All, all sides. Yes. Mike, did you have a comment? I did. Yes. Go ahead. So th there's no uh, waiver requested for the uh, cupolos or for the uh, roof there on the tower. Not required. Not required? Okay. No. Any other comments from members of the board? Yeah, Paul, I have a question. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, thanks. Uh, good looking building, guys. I, I, I like the windows. I like the design. Just a question. Uh, there are no other additions, obviously. I, I, I know just the only elevation which you're showing is that kind of three-story bump out with the cupola, but nothing to do with the... Um, a little portico there that the entryway, I, I would assume. And secondly, um, the drive it brick on the below area, that's a that's a traditional looking brick. I don't see a detail. It's a traditional looking brick with, uh, you know, the three inch by with, with the um, masonry uh, looking brick and it's red, correct? Is it a red color? That's correct. Yeah, and, and, and so there's no um, expansion of the footprint at all. So they're, they're really just uh, uh, going in to reface the, uh, the existing structure using that uh, red uh, uh, drive it brick. Uh, so so a, a bit of a more traditional uh, brick for, for New England um, type of architecture, as well as the cedar shingles on the, the upper courses of the building. It's an improvement, thank you. Any other comments from members of the board? Um, before I open it up to the public, I would uh, just like to say it's uh, heartwarming to see somebody come in with a design that moves closer to the uh, vision of the comprehensive plan rather than away from it. So thank you for that. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak on this? Any members of the public that wish to speak, if you're on the Zoom app, you can use the raise your hand feature to let us know you'd like to speak. If you're on the phone, I don't see anybody on the phone. Uh, but if you were on the phone, you would do a star nine um, on your phone. So raise your hand if you wish to speak. I don't see anybody, Paul. Thank you. Uh, if not, uh, may I have a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Um, are you able to identify who's making these motions in seconds? I made the motion. Yeah. Okay, no, it's okay. I second. We got it. Um, motion is made and seconded to close the public hearing. Is there any discussion? Mr. Pirick? Aye. Mr. Chumo? Aye. Mrs. Owen? BJ? You're we muted, can't hear BJ. you. She's muted. Yell louder. <laughs> muted. Unmute yourself. Okay. Am I, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. How do you vote? Aye. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I don't Mr. Know Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. The public hearing is closed. May I have a motion for a. Uh, uh, Approval of the waiver request. Both waivers. I make the motion. It's just one waiver. They they are not going to request Correct. a waiver First on the lighting. Waiver. So it's yeah. just that. Yep. Thank you, Ron. So yeah, I'll, second I'll make that motion. Motion is made by Bill, seconded by Art. Is there any discussion? Just a just a comment, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, I, I think uh, like you said, they uh, did a nice job of 
improving this building. It is a lot of different additions. I, I, was, I know that hotel very well from being involved with how the additions went on and on and on, but uh, very happy to see what you've done there. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Pirick. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. The uh, waiver is granted. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Next item on the agenda is item 5B, a request of Stonebridge Farm LLC for modification of the approved final plan for Stonebridge Farm 11 lot major subdivision to allow relocation of the stone wall along the front property line and reconstruction of the wall in the subdivision open space parcel. Property is identified as 430 Mitchell's Lane Assessors Plat 124, lots 13, 14, 14A, 15. The request for the request is for removal and relocation of the stone wall. Mr. Silva. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Right. Sometimes I wonder whether I'm speaking loudly enough and I apologize. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on this matter, I've been engaged uh, the office of Silver Thomas Motlin in Offenburg uh, to represent uh, Mark Brennan, the uh, principal of Stonebridge Farm LLC. Uh, he uh, has, at the beginning of the construction of a new road into the 11 lot subdivision, uh, moved a stone wall that was parallel, and very, very close to Wapping, uh, Mitchell's Lane, excuse me. Uh, and uh, he reconstructed it so that it's back a ways from Mitch, Mitchell's Lane and it has now two columns on either side, which are very artistically pleasing. Uh, and the problem was that the original set of plans were prepared by the Fleet Engineering and Chris Stuhammer uh, had been filed and uh, clearly articulated the movement of certain stone walls in the interior of the development but they did not really identify the existing stone wall parallel to Mitchell's Lane. Uh, once Mr. Uh, Brennan began the construction, uh, he realized that he had to move the wall back for safety purposes so that the vehicles coming in and coming out, especially going out, would have a clear line of sight uh, to the north and to the south without being impeded and required to go beyond the wall that presently existed uh, to uh, Mitchell's Lane, and it might cause a danger to oncoming, with oncoming traffic. Uh, we did not uh, ask uh, technically for the wall to be moved and reconstructed. In and here. <clears throat> uh, I'm speaking as loud as I can. I, I don't know it's whether better. it's better. Okay, thank you. Uh, we didn't originally ask on the plan that the wall be allowed to be moved, so we've come back. Uh, to the planning board with the request that per the suggestion of uh, Mr. Wolanski that we file a new set of plans showing where the previous wall was uh, uh, located and where the new wall is located. We also provided pictures of the new wall with the application and we had a site visit by the planning board at that location, I believe on Monday at around four o'clock. So we're asking for permission to modify the uh, original final approval to include the right to reconstruct using the same stones, the wall that is no, now in existence and showing the entrance to the main development. Mr. Silva, just to get this on the record, I would like to um, reaffirm that uh, all of the stone that was in the original wall was used in the new wall. That's correct. Thank you. Uh, as you noted, we did make the site visit on Monday. Um, do members uh, of the planning board have any questions for Mr. Silva? I have a question. Go ahead, Mike. <clears throat> so uh, that wall was a continuous wall uh, up across several properties uh, before it was uh, taken down and moved no. back? No, it existed on our property only. 
Okay, so it wasn't a continuous one from the other properties mm -hmm. adjacent mm -hmm. to it? it was. I defer to uh, Mr. Brennan, who knows about the particulars of uh, what was there, perhaps a little bit more clearly than I did, but that was a wall that was on our property alone. Okay, because I, I thought it was in line with the existing walls that were on the adjacent properties too. And I thought it was a continuous wall that was there, you know, and it was part of a historic wall. I could be corrected, but I think that we're only touching and moving the wall that was on our property. But it did, it did um, abut, I guess, the walls on the abutting properties, except for the break for where the uh, driveway was for the house that was demolished. So there was, I think to Mike's point, uh, there was a wall, a continuous stone wall along the frontage of, of several properties. And this portion of stone wall on the frontage of this particular property is what's been moved. Mm -hmm. Does that answer the question, Mike? Yes. So right now uh, the wall is uh, it's separate from the others now because it, it, it wasn't reconnected to them because it was stepped back. There wasn't any uh, effort to make a, cont a continuity with the existing walls, right? Correct. Okay. Just a any follow other up question? Go ahead, Bill. Just to follow up on that, um, I, 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 we were on the site visit. I recall being there. Ron, it, it does conform with the Stonewall Ordinance in that where the ends are, uh, the ends are, are, are cut, I guess, if you would call it, they, they return. Because the reason I only bring that up is because the plan that we, that we was given uh, that I see shows um, a thicker wall at the ends, except for one, except for the right portion. <laughs> I think it's just a deficiency on the plan, but I wanna make, I'm more concerned that if there is a return there, it's in conformance with the Stonewall Ordinance. I believe it is. I believe it does conform. Yes. Yeah, I think it does too. I just, the plan doesn't show that uh, for whatever reason, I think it might just be a, a miss yeah. on the plan. If you, you see what I'm talking about, if you can see the plan, you, you'll understand, I think. Yeah. But other than that, I support the, I support the, uh, the request. Other questions for Mr. Silva? I, you know, just one other one, Paul, you know. Go ahead, I, Mike. Yeah, I think the wall is reconstructed, you know, and looks good, you know. Um, I can't, I don't know, I don't understand how it could have been over, you know, uh, it could have been overlooked that it was, uh, that it needed to be part of the original plan, you know, and that it had to be uh, relocated, you know. I just don't understand how that happens. I, uh, I don't know myself, except once I revisited the original plans, I noted that that wall was not identified on the plan. Uh, and I worked with the plan as was presented to me originally. As soon as I found that uh, there was another wall that hadn't been reflected on the plan, I immediately took the steps to, uh, to contact the Preet Engineering and find out if, if that was uh, an oversight uh, and it was acknowledged as being an oversight. I think the focus of the Preet Engineering was to make sure that the wall within the context of the main body of the uh, site had been pulled up, saved, and reconstructed down near the bridge and the uh, pond that's uh, in the common area. So they paid attention to that, and that's all on the plan. But for some reason, uh, the wall on Mitchell's Lane was not shown on the original plan, and, and uh, I did not make that a part of our presentation. Excuse me. SBJ. Yes, uh, I don't remember a discussion about the front part of the stone wall, but I remember a lot of discussion about the stone wall in back. And that's the one obviously that was concentrated on, but I don't remember anyone mentioning anything about the one in front. Care to comment, Mr. Silva? Well, oh, I, I think that's absolutely true. I, I certainly didn't <clears throat> refer to that wall because I didn't think it existed. <laughs> On the plan, that is. I was proven wrong. Other comments for Mr. Silva? Questions for Mr. Silva? May I have a motion to... Uh, approve the change for the relocation and reconstruction of the wall. Joe Moe, Bill Nash. 
Art Weber second. The motion is made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Pirick. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. The motion passes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Have a good evening. We're not done yet. You're not done yet, Bob. Yeah, you have one more, <laughs> Mr. Silva. Don't go away yet. Not so fast. <laughs> the next item is item 5C, a request of Stonebridge Farm LLC for a one-year extension of final plan approval for the Stonebridge Farm 11 lot major subdivision of property fronting on Mitchell's Lane. The property is identified as 430 Mitchell's Lane, Assessor's Plat 124, mm -hmm. lots 13, 14, 14A, and 15. Mr. Silva. Uh, yes, thank you for reminding me that it's a formal request uh, as a result of the conditions we find ourselves in uh, with COVID-19 and whatnot, the entire proposal has been set back in time. Uh, the approval by the board as amended tonight uh, is good until January of 2021, but uh, we will not be able to uh, go ahead and, and do the work and complete the project uh, by that time. And I wanted to make sure to speak out of an abundance of caution that we would be given another year's time within which to complete the project. And that's the purpose of the request. Questions from Mr. Silva. Motion to approve, Bill Nash. Second, Art Weber. Motion is made and seconded uh, to approve the request for a one year extension. Is there any discussion? Mr. Pirick. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. The request is granted. Now, thank you very much. <laughs> you dismissed. And uh, Thanks, might Bob. as well add, have a great Thanksgiving holiday and stay safe. You, you too, all. Bob. You as well. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. You too. You, Bob. Next item on the agenda is item 5D, public <clears throat> hearing. Request of James Sullivan for preliminary plan approval of a proposed two lot subdivision of land fronting on Lewis Drive and Bailey Avenue, identified as 15 Lewis Drive, Assessor's Plat, 125, lot 950. We motion have a motion to open hearing. a public hearing. Second, BJ. Second, Second Joshua. Joshua. Who made the motion? I did, Art. Thank you. Uh, motion is made and seconded to open the public hearing. Is there any discussion? Mr. Pirick? Aye. Mr. Chumo? Aye. Mrs. Owen? Aye. Mr. Weber? Aye. Mr. Fenton? Aye. Mr. Nash? Aye. I vote <coughs> aye. The public hearing is open. Who is speaking? Um, is it Lynn? Yep, the engineer is here as well as the applicant, Mr. Sullivan. Welcome. So one of you needs to unmute. <laughs> I'm going to have to unmute myself. There you go. <laughs> I was just staring y'all down. Um, <laughs> so this project proposes um, to create a two lot subdivision of an existing lot of record that um, has existing frontage on Lewis Drive in Middletown. We looked at this a few months ago uh, for a different applicant who had proposed this as a three lot subdivision. There was some conversations regarding the public sections versus private sections of um, Bailey Avenue. And that project had since been um, stopped. Um, the new applicant or the applicant I'm working with now proposes only a two lot subdivision. Um, so we're not needing any frontage on what was up in the air in whether or not it was public or private portion of Bailey Avenue. We have plenty of frontage on the public portion of Bailey Avenue and the existing frontage on Lewis Drive. Um, both lots exceed the minimum lot sizes required. They both have public or utilities available for connection. Um, this project 
as you can see in your packet that we submitted to you, would support three lots. Um, we did a conservation development, which shows three lots, which would cause the construction of um, a small section of a cul-de-sac so that we could get the frontage that we needed for the two lots that would be closer to Bailey Avenue. Um, you can share your screen if you want, or if you want, I can put the okay. up. Do you mind? Because I didn't get the plan ready. <laughs> But I can go quickly to your website, so that's not a problem. I can no, do I it. I can get it. Hold on. Okay. Can you make it bigger? <laughs> My eyes are, I need bigger glasses. <laughs> you have to get like a screen that Jack, like Jack Kane had in his office. Big monitor, like... yes. I mean... <laughs> All right. So, um, Right, so this is the proposed two lot subdivision, which is the screen that Ron has up now. And you can see that we have existing frontage on Lewis Drive um, with the utilities that exist there. And we have frontage on the new portion of Bailey Avenue, which was constructed as part of the Saltwood Farm subdivision. Um, there are existing utilities in that roadway. As you probably recall last time when you had seen this project, we do have a wetland feature that it's at the top of the site. Um, that edge has been delineated and verified by the DEM recently. So within the last few years, so it's still active um, or valid, I guess you'd say. Uh, and you can see that the lots are quite large. So you can, um, we have plenty of space. Um, the next page, we show the um, conservation subdivision, which is a requirement even for a minor subdivision now with the changes that were made to that ordinance, um, which proposes some open space. But in order to get the frontage, we have to build a small cul-de-sac. Um, that isn't going, that's not the project that our client is proposing at this time. This meets the criteria for the submission that we had to meet, but we do re request that the board allow us the the two lot conventional subdivision versus a three lot subdivision um, for the site. Um, I have a question. Why do you say a cul-de-sac? Why not use a shared driveway like you did in some other plans? Rather than build the roadway? Yeah. If the board had for, if the board would force um, this subdivision versus the two lot minor subdivision, that's probably something we would ask for a waiver from. So just to be clear there, the applicant's asking for just the two lots in a conventional scenario. He's not requesting the plan that you see on the screen now. But no, this is just a checklist requirement that we right. show you what it would look like. Exactly. I, I understand that. I have a, I have a, a question for the solicitor. Uh, it's, it seems to me when I look at the uh, four conditions that we're supposed to uh, evaluate against that we should be comparing apples to apples so that if we're looking at a proposed uh, three plot subdivision, it should be three plots in both the conventional and the conservation. And then if uh, there wishes to be a change, the applicant can request a change. Alternatively, they could propose, um, since, since in this case, three is the maximum, they could propose a two lot con conservation and a two lot conventional. But it seems to me to compare plans, we need to compare apples to apples. Yeah, I guess the question would be, maybe you can ask the applicant, Mr. Chairman, why they provided a three lot conservation plan versus a two lot plan. If the, the applicant proposes to do the two lot um, plan, which is less dense to get larger lots. Um, they that, also propose a two lot convention, uh, uh, conservation plan. If they were forced into smaller lots, they would want to do three to offset the difference in the lot size. When, when my problem is this, when, when we're asked to uh, compare the conservation plan to the conventional plan according to these conditions that were asked. Um, it seems unfair to have three lots in one and two in the other. 
this is a general question. I, well, I'm, I'm using this as an example, but it, this applies to all these applications where the conservation plan comes in with one number of lots and the conventional one comes in with a different number of lots. It just doesn't seem like a fair comparison. I don't recall, Paul, that happening uh, in the past. Uh, do you recall getting plans with different? Yeah, it, it's, 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 it's happened once before. I, I, I've got a comment. It, it seems to me in the last six months or so, the conventional subdivisions actually come in with less lots yeah. than the conservation one. So <clears throat> I look at that as a less intensive and probably a good thing. Yeah, I think it, it, I'm not arguing whether it's a good thing or not. It, it obviously, less intense development has uh, favorable factors. The problem I'm having is in the comparison that we are asked to make according to the ordinances. We're comparing apples to oranges rather than apples to apples. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I can take a look at the, we can take a look at the regulations. I, I do agree that it would be easier to compare the benefits of a conventional versus conservation if you're looking at the same number of lots. Yes, um, yes. But the client wants to max out the density if they're gonna be forced to go with smaller lots. Whereas- I, I, I understand that. That's not, my, that's not my concern, okay? I understand that, okay? I, Peter understands my issue. I understand what you're saying. I just don't think I understand, the owners I understand of the that property- position. But, but as you said, this is, this is sort of a check off the box sort of plan and not a plan that they intend to go with right now. And, and if, the, if the board said, no, we want you to do that one, then they could, they'd have the option, I guess, of withdrawing at that point in time and coming back with something different. Let, so, me, ask you, let me ask you this, Peter, it, going forward, and let's not uh, uh, get hung up on this one, but going forward, is there a way that we could have submissions come in with equal number of lots? Yes, I will take a look uh, along with Ron at the existing regulations. And if that is what the board will prefer, if, if the regulations don't require that, we will, uh, you know, we can provide a, a, uh, an amendment to the regulations for your review that would require it. Uh, so can we hear back from you at the next meeting on that? Certainly. Thank you. Uh, thank you for bearing with me on that. Are there any question, questions from members of the board uh, to Lynn? I do, uh, Paul. I, yes, Bill. Uh, Bill. Bill and then Art. Lynn, um, my eyes are popping out of my head. You may have mentioned it, but um, I, yeah, the plan that you're looking at, it's a little bigger on my screen. I, I opened it up. What is that line uh, runs through the middle of the property and it's identified as a national heritage boundary, something or other? Is it on the screen? Yes. My eyes are having the same problem. It's cut right through the middle. Yeah, that's that's a coverage that comes out of DEM, I believe. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's, oh, a, I see what you're it's a required layer that they need to show for, that anyone needs to show as part of a, a subdivision design uh, through this process. They're supposed to show things like wellhead protection areas. I understand that. What does that say though, Ron? Can you tell me? I, I can't read it. I can't read it on the screen either. Let me I'm see. Just, I, my only question would be is if it's on the plan, obviously it's an overlay and because we can't read it, <laughs> just get some clarification on it. And if, the, if we're not missing anything because it shows a boundary there for whatever reason. So to me, it tells me that there's something connected yep. to it. Uh, I can read it better on my paper copy. It says natural heritage area boundary per DEM resources maps. So again, this is a statewide coverage. So Lynn, I would just ask you to confirm that there's no required regulations that fall because it runs right through the property. I mean, I, it probably nothing, but I think, you know, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't hold up an approval for that, but I, I'd make it a condition. I'm not aware of any regulatory um, requirements that would be tied to that designation. Lynn, do you? Do you I don't know anything? any either, no. Art, you were next? Yes, I, <clears throat> I, I could be dreaming here or uh, hallucinating, but I thought I saw an email today from one of the abutters concerned about drainage. And uh, I think they're, 
they've discovered that they're downhill of these proposed developments and water now is running downhill these days. So yes, I'm just thinking, yeah. about, are, are they protected? Are all the abutters protected from uh, runoff? So you, you received that letter at the beginning of the, of the meeting um, from attorney Fox on behalf of okay. yes. Um, yes. the trickies. Um, so what I was going to suggest when we get to that point in the meeting, if the board is inclined to approve this application to apply another uh, condition, a uh, recommended condition that the, um, that the project be required to comply with the town's uh, chapters 151 and 153, uh, which are the uh, stormwater management ordinance and the construction uh, erosion control ordinance. That's pretty much a standard condition that we apply to all applicants. And that would ensure that at the time that that particular lot, lot two is the one that they're concerned about, that then when that lot is developed, they will have to comply with the uh, requirements, the stormwater management requirements. Okay, so that'd be another condition then. Does That's that right. really have to be said? I mean, isn't it? Just well, it, it, it might be redundant, um, but we have applied this condition to, to plans in the past just to make it abundantly clear to everyone, including the applicant, that uh, that they're required to comply with those stormwater management requirements. And but I, there's I no also think, water. open, I mean, yeah, one at a time, please. The stormwater, um, there is no stormwater management proposed as part of the subdivision plan because there's no particular development proposed at this time. So the way this will be addressed is at the building permit stage for each of the lots when, when those, uh, whoever the property owner is, the builder, yeah. um, when they come in for building permits for each lot, they will have to yeah. go through that stormwater management process and, okay. um, and it will be reviewed by the building official and the town engineer at that time. Does anyone else uh, wish to ask Lynn questions? Uh, does any member of the public wish to uh, speak? Okay, we have, uh, I guess, top of the list here, Sam Howell would like to speak. Mr. Howell. Uh, we can't hear you. Uh, are you- uh, Can you hear me now? Yes, 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 we yes. Can. hello folks. Um, thank you, I'll make it brief. Uh, I'm a neighbor on Satris Way, some of you may know me. Um, I, I've met with Mary Tricky with her concerns, um, and I also met with Kevin Kirby. Um, Kevin Kirby is directly to the east. He owns the lot, the next lot to the east. Um, he was not aware, or as an abutter, did not receive any mail, just FYI. Um, I'm beyond the 200 foot perimeter and did not receive anything. I'm, I was made aware of it by Mary Tricky. Um, all I want to add is um, the, that wetland area is incredibly wet. Kevin Kirby is building a house on the east side and um, has gone through amazing um, steps to mitigate the water issues. Um, and so all I'm saying is, is that the lots in question are downhill and there is more water obviously running downhill. Mary Tricky's concerns to the to the south um, is that she is slightly downhill from lot two, and there is a concern with water running there. Um, so, anyways, I'm I'm not I'm 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 just as a, a concerned citizen, but uh, I think the overall consensus of our neighborhood would be that two houses is better than three um, from a conservation point of view. It makes sense. It's less impact on the schools. I don't even need to name the issues to you. I think Art Weber um, connected to that already. Uh, but that would be our take. Um, so that's all I have to say. Thank you. And other members of the public? Yep. Next on the list is Josh Mactaz. Mr. Mactaz. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate that. Um, I am, uh, my name is Josh Mactaz. I am a, a 27 year member of the Rhode Island Bar and I am an abutter uh, to this proposal. Uh, my position is simple. This, uh, the applicant's reliance on the portion of Bailey Avenue 
as the necessary frontage for the second lot is misplaced. This board was asked to recently consider this lot in April of this year when Horan Builders proposed dividing the lot by using the exact same portion of Bailey Avenue as frontage. I will read the relevant conclusion from a detailed memorandum dated April 8th, drafted by Desitel Law to this board relating to Horan's use of Bailey for frontage. Quote, Taking all of these considerations into account, there is significant question as to whether Bailey Avenue is a public right of way or a private right of way. As a result, the planning board cannot render <clears throat> a determination that the relevant portion of Bailey Avenue is a public street as that term is defined in state law and the town ordinances. I disagree with the petitioner's position that they divided it or they looked at certain sections. This, this language is quite clear that Bailey Avenue cannot be determined whether it's a public way or a private way. And respectfully, that seems pretty clear to me and nothing has changed as far as I know since April of this year. Uh, the board cannot determine that Bailey Avenue is public or private. The, the applicant's recourse lies in the superior court. Um, and I would think Horan would wonder, you know, why we've changed course uh, if the board is to uh, grant the applicant's position. So quite simply, I disagree that the Bailey Avenue provides the necessary frontage for the second lot. And I think this was vetted uh, very well uh, by Desitel Law the last time an applicant made this, made this uh, petition. Thank you. Thank you. Peter, could you comment? Well, I was not involved in the prior application, Mr. Chair. Um, it was my understanding, and, and once again, this is just my understanding, it may not be accurate, that um, the issue in the previous application was whether a portion of Bailey Avenue on the uh, eastern end of Bailey Avenue was public or private and not whether the entire street all the way to Paradise Avenue was public or private. That being said, what I will suggest is as the board continues the review at this stage, I will contact uh, Marissa Desitel and uh, clarify with her exactly what she was referring to uh, in the memo that Mr. Magtaz is citing. But as I, as I mentioned, and, and uh, since I was not involved, I, I can't, uh, make a firm representation on this. Uh, I don't recall that the issue involved the entire street rather rather than a the eastern portion of the street. Okay, okay. Will, will you that. check on that? And Back to the board. Okay, uh, other members of the public? Um, yes, I could just add just real quickly to this. Um, the, I, I have a little Please bit- Identify of, yourself. Yes, yeah, sorry. My name is Sam Howell. Uh, I spoke earlier. Thank you. That that eastern section of Bailey, it is my understanding that a neighbor on on Satras Drive owns that easement. I may not be 100% on this, but the story has it was his father who was part of the original subdivision of the Satras Way subdivision, all of Satras Way and Drive. And that easement, David Gray, uh, we believe he has the easement rights to the upper part of Bailey. I don't know the legal recourse. I don't know what that means, but I believe that there is some legal definition that, and, and, and David's aware of this as well. Uh, that's all I know. Thank you. Well, Ms. Desitel did a lot of research back um, for the prior application. So I think it's appropriate that, that Peter has a chance to talk yeah. with Marissa. So Peter, I, would you recommend that the board not act on this application tonight and await, await that um, review? I would agree with that, Ron. Okay. Um, we have one more member of the public that would like to speak, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mike, uh, Mike Kaczynski. Mr. Kaczynski. Can't hear you. He's on. Mike, are you there? Mike Kaczynski. 
apparently he would he doesn't wish to speak so we will move on any other members of the public no that's it okay um uh since uh we will likely continue this we'll leave the public hearing open and yes yes you would yep and um May I have a motion to continue this to the uh, next regular meeting of the planning board? So no. moved, BJ. That would be December 9th, just for everyone listening. Okay. December 9th. December motion 9th. was made by Art, seconded by BJ. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I, I do have this. I had a question before. We... Go ahead, Bill. So I, I just, just from my knowledge, I, re I recall that previous petition, and I appreciate the butter for bringing that up. But my recollection was that they wanted to use the eastern half of Bailey Avenue to access a lot up there. That's not the case here. So I guess my question then to, it appears because they're not asking for relief, that they have enough frontage on that portion, the westerly portion, to get a lot. That's, my, that's the way I recall it, is that they wanted to use that eastern part. That's why it was, it was my intention to get that to be paved all the way through. I want that cut through done. So I, I know I want Pete to re research it, but just as we were talking here, I recall that the, the, the lot was being accessed through that easterly section. And, and to me, it should have been paved all the way through, which then opened up the question of ownership of that, that portion of the right of way. So I still believe that if, if this is the plan in front of me and they have enough frontage there, that portion, if they can show, and I think Pete will find that that portion of, of Bailey is in fact a public right of way, then they have enough frontage in my eyes. But, but that's just my recollection, but I'm prepared to continue and have- yeah, That may very well be, Bill, but I think we should get uh, the solicitor's yep. view agreed. and just make it clear. Agreed, yes, agreed. Yeah, any other- uh, it, it was comments? vetted in, in extreme detail at, at the last- yep. uh, petition so it won't take a long time to uh, figure out Very well. looks like mr sullivan would like to speak mr sullivan hi <clears throat> i just wanted to um just bring up one thing why we showed a two lot plan and a three lot plan um looking at the amount of the land which was taken up by the wetlands we figured in order to make it um financially the same that's why it's three lots instead of two lots if we just kind of open spaced it and blocked it off, we would end up with not, um, we'll say optimal layout and we wouldn't get the return, which, which we need, which I think is also one of the reasons, you know, one of the criteria on your list for consider considering it is that. Uh, thank you. Um, any other comments? Uh, do we have a motion on the table? Yes, we do. Um, the motion is to continue this item to the December 9th meeting while the solicitor looks into the uh, uh, legal ramifications involving Bailey, frontage on Bailey Avenue. Any further discussion? Mr. Pirick? Aye. Mr. Chumo? Aye. Mrs. Owen? Aye. Mr. Weber? Aye. Mr. Fenton? Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. This item is continued to the December 9th meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, just uh, on the issue that you had asked um, with regard to the number of lots being presented. Yes. Conventional and uh, conservation plans. The regulations, while they require a conventional plan and a conservation plan be presented that doesn't spe they don't specifically say that each plan should have the same number of lots yeah i i, I understand that i just think they should yeah. <laughs> how do we address that something that the board uh feels uh should be included or should be part of the process then we can do a simple could, could uh could i request that for the next meeting you come back with some proposed wording that uh that uh, requires that and let the board discuss it Sure. Is that okay with everyone on the board? Oh, see, I'm not sure that really works. Yeah. Because you're trying to get something to conform, which is actually a different philosophical approach to land development. 
Yeah. So I, I think yeah. it doesn't, you know, the number of lots, I, I, I don't see it quite the same way you do, Paul. I understand where you're coming from, but. Well, if, yeah. if, if they can do a conservation uh, plan for N lots, they can do a conventional plan for N lots because well, the, the number of lots is determined based on the developable land uh, in, uh, you know, in the area under consideration. So they should be able to submit plans with equal numbers of lots. Mr. Well, Jones, this is not on the agenda. Why don't, I, why don't I prepare something that can be put on the agenda and then the, the board can discuss it at that time. Yeah, please, please. But I think what you're gonna find if we do this a hundred times, 90 times you're fine, you're probably gonna get more lots on a conservation subdivision than conventional. I mean, it's kind of like the way it is. I don't know what to say, you know? Yeah. I don't think I don't think that's possible. <laughs> the the number of lots on a on a conservation plan is determined by the number of lots available for a conventional plan. So no. you should be able to submit both plans with the same number of lots. I I disagree, but I'm not sure either, Paul. I, I, I'm going to see what Pete says. Let's let's, uh, let's discuss it at the next meeting. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is item 5E, a request of Carol A. Cummings, trustee, on behalf of Thanatopsis Trust for combined preliminary and final plan approval of a two-lot subdivision. Property fronting on Indian Avenue and Vaucluse Avenue, identified as 738 Indian Avenue, Platte 129, Lot 47. Mr. Russell, are you speaking? Or Mr. Silva? Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mike Russell. Yes. Um, is my video not on? Uh, I don't see the video. I hear your voice, though. Let me see if I can get uh, you. You got your makeup on, uh, Mike? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. I don't seem to be able to get you to turn your video on here for some reason, Mike. Uh, let me. Uh... It's not something I'm doing. Oh, here I go. I'll promote you to panelist. Maybe that'll work. Still getting the hang of this thing. Here we go. There you are. Hey. Oh. Do you want to share your screen, Mike, or do you want me to pop sure. up? Sure. Sure. Let's uh, let's do that. Um... You know, your bank accounts, Mike, thank you. Yeah, how's that? Can I see that plan there? Can yes. everybody see that? No. 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 Why, don't you, uh, why don't you stop sharing and then open the plan and then start, start sharing again? Well, let's try this. Um, well, how about that? There you go, yep. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mike Russell, LDC Engineering Consulting on behalf of the applicant um, uh, for a two lot minor subdivision application. I hope this one uh, a little more straightforward than the last one, but um, uh, this is a, uh, a very irregular shape parcel um, uh, with an address of 783 Indian Avenue, approximately nine acres in area. And quite simply, the applicant uh, is looking to create one buildable lot, a 40,000 square foot lot, which meets the required frontage and area for the R40 district. Uh, the applicant has entered into an agreement with a builder pending the approval of this subdivision. Uh, the builder's intent is to build a single family home with this uh, uh, frontage lot, as it were, uh, on Indian Avenue. Uh, the balance of the property uh, for the purposes of this subdivision is listed as remaining land. Uh, the applicant's uh, home uh, is on the remaining land, uh, as I said, at 783 Indian Avenue, and it's just shown to the right of lot one. Uh, here. We conducted a site visit with the board members uh, earlier this week uh, 
to uh, to view the property. Uh, the the lot that is uh, to be created was evaluated uh, for soil suitability with DEM, which uh, that uh, was approved. Uh, also, uh, there was a wetlands assessment done. Uh, there is no wetlands present uh, on the property or, or any other environmental uh, environmental uh, resource area. Um, so the, the, the buildable lot will require an on-site septic system, a private drinking water well. Uh, it will uh, get its power off of uh, Indian Avenue via overhead service extension or, or underground. Uh, as was mentioned in the, in the previous application, when the uh, owner applicant applies for a building permit, uh, construction site runoff control plan and supporting documents will be submitted in support of a building permit application that will address drainage, uh, soil and erosion control, et cetera. So that is, uh, that is a general overview. Uh, as with the previous application, um, we had gone, checked all the boxes as well with respect to a conservation subdivision and uh, uh, conventional subdivision uh, but purely hypothetical, uh, only to meet the requirements of that uh, section of the newly adopted ordinance. And as I mentioned, the applicant has no intent of developing the remaining land. Um, we had a TRC meeting uh, a week ago uh, to, to review the plan. Uh, it was well received uh, by the members. Uh, the town engineer had requested a modification of the uh, survey certifications, which we had sent him a draft to review. I believe he's all set with that, but I don't know if Ron got confirmation. And that is just yeah. how to address uh, the remaining land um, for this plan prior to recording. I don't think I saw that, but we'll just have to, um, or I'll recommend that the condition that I had in my memo be applied and then we'll confirm before recording, assuming it's approved that that note has been, uh, or the concern of this, the engineer has been satisfied. Okay, very good. And then there was just for the benefit of the board, a second recommended condition um, regarding adding a note to the plan uh, regarding impact fee ordinance requirements. That's a fairly standard condition. So there are two proposed conditions of approval. Uh, members of the board have any questions for Mr. Russell? No, but I do have a comment. Go ahead, BJ. Yes, I understand that the remaining land is going to be left au natural because the owner believes that there's some wonderful wildlife in the area and she wants to maintain the rest of her property that way. At least that's what we were told. Any other comments or questions? I, I can confirm that philosophy because a bow hunter knocked on her door and asked permission to hunt deer in the backyard. So uh, I think that's great. Other comments or questions? Um, so the applicant is requesting, in this case, a combined preliminary and final plan review. So if uh, and, and she satisfied the submission requirements to allow for a combined review, um, if the board is so inclined. Yes, I would like to propose that we accept the plan as given to us. We approve it. Second. May I have a motion uh, to approve this uh, request for item 5E with the uh, conditions that the plan is stipulated? Motion to approve. And the findings, the required findings. And, and the, the findings. findings. Yeah. I have a motion made by Mr. Weber. Anyone second the motion? Second, John Schumo. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Mr. Pirick. Aye. 
Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye. And I vote aye. The uh, motion passes. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, next item on the agenda uh, is item 4E. Item 4E. Review and provide a recommendation to the Town Council on potential amendments to Zoning Ordinance Section 306 regarding development plan review. Uses subject to and exempt from development plan review. Ron, do you want to introduce this? Sure, this is, uh, this is coming back from the last meeting. At the last meeting, it was requested that the solicitor be given an opportunity to review the draft um, that, you that you were previously provided. And I believe he has done that and indicated to me that he is comfortable at least with the form of the amendment and doesn't request any modifications. Um, Peter, you can chime in if you, if you wish. That is uh, absolutely correct, Ron. So, <laughs> and you suggested so um, you suggested a public workshop. Well, that 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 was what I was just going to say. This, I mean, there's two options. The, the board can go ahead and, and schedule a public workshop, accept some public input prior to uh, submitting this with your recommendation to the town council, or you could simply uh, send it to the town council without doing the public workshop. However, I would, I guess, just suggest and, and I think the board is aware of this that the that the town council um, appreciates the planning board uh, allowing for public input and and being able to um, res respond and to report to the town council the results of that input process so you're not required to hold a public workshop you could certainly simply send it forward to the town council but um, you know, as I said, I think the council appreciates the planning board taking that effort. Yeah, I, I, I suggest that we uh, hold a public workshop unless there is uh, objection from other members of the board. How do you feel about it? I'm going to get my motion that, that way. Joe, you I, have I would make a motion to uh, recommend that as well. To recommend what? I didn't hear the original. A, a, public, a public workshop. Okay, so we did somebody make a motion? Joe, did I second? Uh, I, I, yes. Okay. Uh, I, Motions made and seconded to uh, yes. uh, set up a public workshop on this topic. Any discussion? Yeah, I've got some discussion. Go ahead, this, Art. This is really administrative streamlining to get things through the through the town, and I'm not sure what what the public's going to say about it. But you probably don't even know how it works. <laughs> and quite frankly, I'm going to say this: we go through this process. We're very good at it. We have a public hearing on things. We vet it. We send it to the council. And it just like Beaujolais wine, it sits up there for years until it's ready to be open. You need to run for council art. I did. <laughs> oh, right. But, but Art, that doesn't mean that the public doesn't have a chance to chime in, you know? Any other, any other discussion on the motion? Okay, the motion is to uh, set up a public workshop on this topic. Mr. Pyrrhic. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Aye, reluctantly. Mr. Fenton. <laughs> Aye. Mr. Nash. Aye, Art Weber for council. And uh, I vote aye, so uh, Ron, can you set up a, uh, a workshop meeting for this? Uh I'll do that. And I, I'll just um, suggest too that we had previously, or the board had previously suggested um, setting up a workshop for amendments related to uh, exterior lighting, um, which is a fairly straightforward item. And I was wondering if the board would wish to maybe do both of these items on a single, in a single meeting. That's a good yeah. idea. Thank Sounds you. Good. Sounds good. Make it happen. All right. We'll do it. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is item 4F. Review and provide recommendation to the town council on proposed amendments to section 400, definitions and section 725 
the Middletown Zoning Ordinance regarding ground mounted solar photovoltaic installations, including design requirements for all arrays and specific provisions for arrays mounted on carports and canopies. So, uh, quick introduction, Ron. Sure, at the last meeting, this is another item that we talked about briefly, and it was re requested that the solicitor take a look at it and give us some advice. And uh, Peter, I'll let you speak on it. Sure, Ron. Um, so I did take a look at this and, and did a little bit of research. And, I, I, you know, putting aside the, the, the drafting of the amendments, I think is fine. I think the, the bigger issue here is when you look at these, both the ground mounted solar arrays, as well as the solar carports, there are huge differences in the size and degree of these. You can, you know, there are these solar carports that you might have in someone's driveway. And then there are solar carports that could cover the entire uh, parking lot of stop and shop. And I think before the board gets into um, passing along amendments to the town council, that they want, might want to take a deeper dive into this and determine at what level are these allowed by right? At what level are they, are they going to be required to get a special use permit or some other level of relief uh, from the zoning board or through a development review process, because once again, if, if you if you go online and you take a look at these, there are some that are are very nice and and um, you know subtle, and others that have quite a dramatic visual impact. You know, certainly both in in, in the commercial area, and more particularly in a residential area. So my suggestion was going to be that the board, either through a workshop or through a subcommittee, maybe take a closer look at this. And, and um, perhaps come up with some different categories of what might be allowed through the development plan review process by right, and then what might require uh, higher levels of approval. Well, you, um, you, you mentioned the concern I had with parking lots, so I, I'm very much in favor of this additional research. How do others feel about this? I've actually already, based on Peter's reaction and response, I've already asked Rita to begin that research. Rita, you want to just chime in about what you've found so far? Sure, yeah. I started looking at uh, what's on the books in um, Portsmouth, Little Compton, Exeter, Cranston, and then the state also has some guidance. And as Peter noted, um, this is definitely an area where things are in flux. Um, all of those towns have recently updated their ordinances and specifically with carports, it seems to not be very well addressed. Um, so I've started doing the research and gathering information in one place. Uh, I'm at the stage where I'm sort of ready to take what I've written down and put it into, excuse me, into a, a summary form. So um, I haven't synthesized it all yet, but I at least have some preliminary research. Um, sort of generally, it seems that most municipalities have gone towards a system where they are categorizing the ground mounted by size and breaking it up into four or more different categories based on um, how much land area it's covering. And then there's different levels of review um, per each of those categories from uh, the lowest being allowed by right um, for something that's uh, relatively small um, all the way up to needing a special use permit and then development plan review. So, so if we continued this to our next meeting on December 9th, would you be ready with a, a draft of uh, that includes the findings of your research? Uh, yeah, I think that we could uh, at least sort of start with a preliminary draft and see what direction the board wants to go. I can give some suggestions of how to break it up into categories if that's something that we wanted to approach. Um, and then uh, I think there would probably be discussion about what level of review is necessary in those different categories. Uh, okay with other members of the board? Yep. Yes. May, yep. yes. We have a motion to continue this item to the December 9th meeting. So moved, Bill Nash. Second. John Schumo. Motion is made and seconded to continue this item uh, to the December 9th meeting so that additional research can be included. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Pirick. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Aye. Mr. Fenton. Yes. Mr. Nash. Aye. 
And I vote aye. Uh, the item is continued. The uh, next item on the agenda is the uh, project status report. Are there any comments from members of the board on the project status report? Very comprehensive, Ron. Thank you. Sure. And Reed, I'm sure you had something to do with it. Not this one. <laughs> really? <laughs> Uh, I, I, I have a comment, and, and that is that uh, uh, we postpone things, um, some items um, pending the return of in-person meetings, and we seem to be doing more and more on Zoom, and it seems to be as though it's going to be a while before we have in-person meetings. So my question is, when I look at um, item number four, use table, and item number 10, the airport zoning, uh, are those things that uh, people are willing to use Zoom meetings for, or do you still prefer to go with the in-person meeting? No, uh, I, I prefer I prefer in-person. Uh, at this point, I don't see any, there's, there's no hard deadlines for us. I mean, I, I, I do enough Zoom meetings day, all day long I'm about tired of them. I'd much prefer to wait. And then, frankly, I think you know it's going to be sooner rather than later that we'll be having them again. So I, I prefer to wait. Well, I, I, I agree. Yours can, is sort of ongoing and there's no big uh, rush to it. How about the airport uh, meeting? How do you feel on that, Joe? Um, I, I feel the same way as Bill just expressed. I don't think any of it's, uh, you know, life or death. Um, and I think we get a lot more traction in person. Okay, and the, the only other one was the uh, uh, progress on setting up a workshop for the light pollution and we've already discussed that. It's going to be included in the other meeting. So right. any other comments on the project updates? Thank you. Um, anything on BRAC? Uh, we're still trying to get a, an update from the Navy about the timing for the accessing or the, the transfer of the, of the shoreline property. It's, it's a continuously moving target. Um, Sean Brown has just recently this week, in fact, asked um, our attorney to reach out to the Navy again uh, to try to get a better handle on when the cleanup is gonna be complete and, and that land will finally be uh, transferred over to the town. So hopefully we'll have, have an update soon. Thank you. Uh, we've already heard about the use table subcommittee, uh, marijuana, John. Yes, uh, we have a meeting on November 24th, Zoom meeting at three o'clock. And I'm sure Dwight will be in on that. And Peter uh, certainly forwarded me the information. Hey, Thank just, you. While you're on that, John, and uh, um, I, I plan on attending, however, I, I actually have a meeting out of my office on that day, which came up just on Monday. So uh, I'll be listening in. I won't be able to be at my computer. So I'll, okay. I'll, but I will call in. I'll be driving, traveling back from a meeting. So um, thank you, Bill. I will get in. Okay. Uh, tree Commission, BJ? Well, the Tree Commission meeting is scheduled for Thanksgiving, so obviously it's not going to be held. And I think all of them would like to have me wish everyone as happy a Thanksgiving as possible as we can have. Um, the Tree Commission hopes to meet on around the 10th of De December, and they have asked the Historical Society, if possible, if they might use their facility uh, to meet. That's it. Thank you. Uh, open space and fields, Mike. It was supposed to be a meeting going on simultaneously with this meeting, you know, and uh, it looks like I've been getting, uh, you know, some. Uh, uh, text messages from the people. It sounds like our meeting bumped out their meeting. So I don't know if that's a Zoom conflict or what. Uh, but from what I understand, there, there is one thing that's coming up and it's uh, there's some uh, funding available for uh, developing trails, hiking trails and so forth. And I guess they were looking for the input from the Open Space and Field Committee and maybe some of the other committees as to what projects they would like to uh, see uh, you know, done in the town that could 
qualify for that funding. Right, we're, we're reaching out to uh, Open Space and Fields and the Tree Commission to get some input on, on a, a project or maybe more than one project to submit for that grant application. Thank you. Uh, Conservation Commission, Joe? Yeah, the, um, the, this, this month's meeting was canceled, so there's no, uh, no new updates at this time. Thank you. Quidnick Island Planning Commission, Art? I don't have anything for you. Thank you. Uh, upcoming meetings, you see we have one scheduled for December 1st. That's to discuss the Howland Avenue project uh, application and then our regular meeting on December 9th. Uh, does anyone have anything else to bring up at this meeting? I, I just got one question actually for the planner. For the TRC meetings now, since we don't have a public works director and a zoning officer, uh, how is how is that working? Well, we haven't had to schedule one yet since Tom left last week, but I will have to confirm with the town administrator that there's an acting DPW director. And if so, that person would be able to serve on the TRC. So we, we would at least have a quorum. Um, we don't have, you know, an acting, uh, so to speak, building zoning official yet. Um, or a new zoning official. Uh, it's actually the zoning official that serves on the TRC. We have, a, we have someone that's filling in, helping out with um, uh, building inspections, uh, but we don't yet have a, a new zoning official hired. So if I have an acting DPW director, I can, I can get three of us together for a TRC. So that's, that's the way we would handle that. Okay, thank you, Ron. Anything else anyone wishes to bring up? Yeah, just I wanted to point out that uh, Mike Fenton is very festive with the Christmas tree up prior to Thanksgiving. Very Jeez. Festive. I was going to make a comment on that, but I'm glad you did, Bill. <laughs> a big story behind that, and I don't want to get into that right now. <laughs> has it up all year. Usually, I, usually I, I sit in front of the TV, and it, I, you know, I, that thing isn't behind me. So, but, I, but my link over there isn't working well, so I have to sit over here. At the you watch all those Hallmark Christmas movies. No. Yeah. He hasn't taken it down from last year. <laughs> longer than that. Longer than that. <laughs> I, want, I, uh, I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving in whatever form you're having it. I hope it's enjoyable for you. Thank you for the meeting tonight. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. Motion's made and seconded to adjourn. Any discussion? Mr. Pirick. Aye. Mr. Chumo. Aye. Mrs. Owen. Aye. Mr. Weber. Happy Thanksgiving. Aye. Yes. Mr. Fenton. Aye. Mr. Nash. Happy Thanksgiving. <coughs> aye. I vote aye. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving.